Hey there, my name is Drew Brashler, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about DCAs on the Behringer X32 or Midas M32. If you're brand new to my channel, I am all about helping you feel more confident in your production gear, no matter where you're starting from. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, a DCA stands for Digitally Controlled Amplifier, and it is the same thing as a VCA, or a Voltage Controlled Amplifier. Now, DCAs and VCAs are the same thing. However, VCAs come from our analog days back when we had analog consoles. Now, what a VCA and a DCA is, is it is a remote control to the inputs that are associated with it. Now, I'm going to say that again. It's a remote control to the inputs that are associated with it. So we can take any channels and we can associate them with a VCA. And then we can take that VCA and turn it up or down. So if we had channel one and channel two, and we associated these with one VCA or DCA in the Behringer X32's case, and we turn that DCA up, then it's taking these two microphones or these two channels, turning them up. If we turn that VCA down, it's turning them down. But one thing that a VCA and a DCA does not do is it does not sum these two channels together. Now, we do have some things on the X32 that sum things together. Our mono bus, our stereo bus, and all of our mix buses are a form of a summation point, meaning that it takes multiple channels. In our case with the X32, we have 32 channels. Uh, and then also we have our eight auxes. It takes all of those and it can sum them together in either a mono or a stereo channel. So we can either take all of our 32 channels and put them down the mono bus, which makes that technically one channel, or we put them down the stereo, which makes them two channels. Now, the benefit of a summation point is that we can actually insert something on it. So we could say insert an EQ or a compressor, and we can globally edit all of the sounds of all of those microphones that are going into that summation point. Now, a DCA does not sum. We cannot take a EQ and apply it to a DCA. We cannot take a compressor and put it into a DCA. It just doesn't work because you can't insert on something that doesn't sum the channels together. So that is what a DCA is and is not. But how is it gonna be beneficial for us? Well, the nice thing is about the X32 and the M32 is we have these eight DCAs on the right-hand side. Now, this is gonna be the same case if you have the full size, the compact, and any of the X32s and M32 models that there are, we have the DCAs on the right-hand side. Now, we also have our channels on the left-hand side. Now, what a DCA is helpful for us to do is we can take an entire set of inputs, say the drums, assign it to one DCA, and then I can turn up or down that DCA to adjust the overall volume of the drums with one fader. So how do we do that? Well, it's pretty easy. We can simply have all of our channels here. And then when we want to assign a channel to a DCA, we just have to press and hold the select button. And then we can then apply this DCA to these channels here. Once we are done, we can just simply release the DCA. So I'm going to go ahead and play some audio out of my XLive card into the X32 to show you how this works. So here we have our drum mix here. And what I'm going to do is I can just take my DCA and I can turn it down. And that's by turning it down 10 dB. Or I could take it and turn it up. Okay? And so what I'm doing is if I turn this down by 10 dB, it's in essence me taking all of my fingers and turning all of these inputs down by 10 dB. But if we have something, say, down in the negative 20 or the negative 30, and I was to try to adjust these down, I can't just simply take all of them down the same amount as far as distance of the fader, because as we get down to the bottom of the fader, it's going to turn down even more. We can see that the resolution down on these faders between here and here is infinity to negative 60, which is about 60 decibels of difference, and that's almost in about a quarter of an inch or about six millimeters here. So we can also see that as we're up towards the top here, we can move a quarter of an inch and that's only moving three dB up or three dB down. That's because our faders are a logarithmic type of fader, which is good because that's the way our hearing is. So 
If I was to try and take all my fingers and adjust this up or down, it would be impossible to maintain the perfect mix that I had of these channels. And that's where the DCA comes into a benefit is we can just take this up or down and that's in essence mixing all of these up or down that amount. So one really cool feature that Behringer added to the X32 in a most recent firmware update is the ability to have a meter on the DCA. Now this is something that not all console manufacturers have done and I actually kind of really like this feature. I wish that other console manufacturers would jump on board and do the same thing. But I realize why. And it's because a DCA is not a summing point. Now, <laughs> I've said that a couple times in this video, but I wanna show you how these meter readings work for a DCA because it's not a summing point. So it's not taking the overall calculated mix of all of these channels and showing us what our metering is. It's just taking our overall meters and calculating an estimated meter for the DCA. So in this example, I have pink noise playing into both channel one and channel two. Now channel two, I have inverted the polarity of it. So if I sum channel one and channel two together, it is going to, in essence, remove all audio because one is out of polarity with each other, which would cancel out all of the sound, which is pretty cool. It's actually, it's, it's pretty fun. I, I'm geeking out about this and I'm hoping you guys are geeking out about it too. So I have these two channels as a DCA control from my DCA1. So these are all controlling these two channels. So as I turn my DCA up and down, it will adjust the volume of these two channels. Now, I'm going to go ahead and unmute this channel. So we can see that I have this audio playing into this DCA and it's showing up on main meter in the top of the console. Now, I am going to unmute the other channel and show you that the audio is just going to remove itself. You won't be able to hear it because of that polarity shift that I have in there. So I'm going to unmute this and we can now see that there is no audio playing, but I have two channels that are at unity gain with unity gain amount of noise and it's being summed to nothing because it's identical but out of polarity with each other. We can see that there's no metering up here because it is in essence zeroed out because it's the same thing, reverse polarity. But my DCA is showing me that I have negative 18 or unity gain of signal coming from these two channels. And that's true because I do have negative 18 dB of audio processing through these channels going to this DCA. So the metering is just showing you an estimated total of what these meters on the channels are showing. It's not actually summing them together because my stereo bus is summing them together and it has removed all audio because of the way that these two channels are interacting with each other with one having that polarity reverse. So as I bring this down, we can see that we have our audio coming back up and as I get this closer to zero, that comes back down again. Now, with this being said, I can turn this down and it will show me that I don't have as loud of a signal going into my DCA, which is true. But if I was to bring these up together, I've basically taken all of the audio in my left, right, that's summing these and it's zero, but on the DCA, it's showing a little bit. Now, another really cool feature that Behringer came out with with the X32 with the new version four firmware is this thing called a DCA spill. And it's actually really convenient. So say I'm mixing here on the left side of my faders and I have the rest of my, my band DCAs here and I was wanting to go adjust something on the drums. One thing that I could do is I could just press select on the drum DCA and that in essence spills out the channels that are associated with this DCA, which is pretty cool. But there's even one more thing that we can do. Say I associated these two drum buses with this DCA as well. So I'm going to press and hold uh, my DCA and I'm going to select my two drum subgroups and I'm gonna go ahead and release and I'm mixing here. If I press this, it's not only gonna show me my channels that are associated with this DCA, but it's also going to spill my subgroups 
which is actually pretty cool because that's not something that we've been able to do before on the X32. So this is just one other way of being able to speed up your workflow. Now, how do I have my DCAs on my console? Well, I have my drum, bass, guitars, keys, tracks, and then I have effects. These, this one is my vocal effects. And then I have my vocals, and then I have all of my band. So I double patch all of my band with this DCA so that I can take my band up or down in volume. So I have my drums, bass, guitar, keys, tracks, effects, vocals, and band. So as I'm mixing on a Sunday or at an event, if I'm wanting to overall lower the volume of the entire band. All I have to do is just grab these two faders and I bring it down or up. And I can instantly keep the blend of my vocals versus the band. Now, one thing that I like to do with these DCAs is I like to set them at zero, which means that they are not going to add or subtract any gain to any of the channels that are associated with them. Now, that's one thing that you do need to do is keep these up at zero if you do have anything associated with it. Because if this is all the way down and you have the band start playing, none of the audio is gonna pass because this is turned all the way down. Same thing with the mute. If we mute this, it's going to flash the mutes on the channels and no audio from the drums is gonna come through. So my mixing tip for you with diving into DCAs is set these all at zero. And then as you're in sound check, get your blend of all of your instruments that you like. So get the, the blend of the kick drum versus the snare and the toms and the overheads. Get all of that blended well. And then what you can do is you know that if this is at zero, that is your baseline mix. And so then say a song needs a little bit more bass guitar or a little bit more keys in that in that particular song. Once that song is done, all you have to do is drop these back down to zero and you know that you're back at your baseline mix, which is super helpful. I hope this video was helpful for you learning what DCAs and VCAs are if you have an old analog console. But it's something that I use every day when I'm mixing. It, I find this to be very, very helpful when I'm mixing a big show that has multiple inputs greater than just my 16 inputs because I have all of my band here on these eight faders, including my effects, which is very helpful. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel here. And if you happen to have any questions or ideas of videos that I should make for you in the future, drop them in the comment section below because I'm always reading through those to find the next video that's gonna be helpful for you. If you haven't checked out my website, it's at drewbrashler.com. So go ahead and check it out. Thanks so much.